got something new coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hot. Mm-hmm. It's called Size Em Up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Got a joint called Ebonics. Mm-hmm. Born Lamont Coleman, Big L emerged from the streets of Harlem in the early 1990s, captivating audiences with his unparalleled freestyling ability and clever wordplay. His rise to fame was swift and inspiring. Big L's life was abruptly cut short in a senseless act of violence in 1999 when he was killed in a fatal shooting. This is the story of Big L, a lyrical genius whose rise to fame was as meteoric as it was tragic. Tragic death. Big L rose from the streets of Harlem, New York, with rhymes as sharp as his wit and a flow as smooth as butter. His lyrical prowess was unmatched, his wordplay unmatched, and his charisma undeniable. Big L's story was a life built from ambition and struggle, ultimately cut short by tragedy, but his impact on the hip-hop world remains undeniable. On February 15, 1999, Big L's life was tragically cut short in a drive-by shooting in his beloved Harlem. He was shot nine times in his face and chest by a masked man, leaving him no chance of survival. The world of hip-hop was forever changed on that fateful day, February 15, 1999. The streets of Harlem became the backdrop for a senseless act of violence that would claim the life of one of its brightest stars. As the shock of Big L's death reverberated through the rap community, the search for answers began. The police launched an investigation, determined to bring the perpetrator to justice and provide closure to Big L's loved ones. But the motive behind Big L's murder remained elusive. The police had yet to pin down a motive or identify any suspects. Theories circulated, ranging from retaliation against one of Big L's brothers, who were both in prison at the time, to a possible misunderstanding involving a woman. The investigation faced numerous challenges, and the truth remained shrouded in mystery, leaving Big L's friends and colleagues grappling with the loss and searching for answers. Despite the difficulties, the detectives working on the case remained determined to find justice for Big L. They meticulously combed through evidence, interviewed witnesses, and pursued every lead that emerged. As the investigation progressed, a suspect emerged, Gerard Woodley, a 29-year-old man living in the Bronx. Even though older by five years, Gerard Gerard Woodley was one of Big L's childhood friends and often ate at Coleman's dinner table while they were young. Gerard Woodley's picture was even on the back of Big L's first album cover, so they were close to a good extent. Woodley was arrested on May 13, 1999, in his Bronx apartment and charged with second-degree murder in connection with Big L's death. The arrest of Gerard Woodley brought a glimmer of hope to those seeking justice for Big L. Authorities believed that Woodley may have been motivated by revenge against one of Big L's brothers, who were both in prison at the time of his death, or at least believed that they had done something to warrant retaliation. However, the details surrounding Woodley's involvement and the evidence against him remained undisclosed. It is important to note that Woodley had a history with the law, having been previously arrested on murder charges in 1990 and 1996, although he was not convicted in both cases. Additionally, Woodley was also wanted on a federal warrant for drug trafficking, adding another layer of complexity to the investigation. The arrest of Gerard Woodley marked a significant development in the case, but the investigation was far from over. The police continued to gather evidence, interview witnesses, and build a strong case against Woodley. Unfortunately, the investigators couldn't gather enough evidence, and the murder charges against Woodley had to be dropped. While Woodley successfully escaped murder convictions three times, he ended up in jail for gun possession twice. He served a total of 10 years in jail for gun possession, once in the early 2000s and once in 2011. In 2016, Woodley was fatally shot in the head and back outside his home in Harlem. With the perpetrators of Big L's murder still at large, his murder remains unsolved to this day early life childhood breakthrough. Born Lamont Coleman, on May 30, 1974, Big L grew up in the heart of Harlem, surrounded by the sights and sounds of a neighborhood that would shape his artistry. Growing up in the heart of Harlem, Big L faced the challenges that came with living in a tough environment. His parents, Gilda Terry and Charles Davis, provided a loving home, but their relationship faced difficulties and Davis left the family when Big L was just a child. Despite this setback, Big L found solace and inspiration in the rich cultural tapestry of Harlem. As a child, Lamont, affectionately known as Little L or Montmont, showed an early affinity for music. From a young age, Lamont was drawn to the power of words, finding solace and inspiration in the rhythm and poetry of hip-hop. At the age of 12, he became infatuated with hip-hop and began freestyling with other aspiring artists in his neighborhood. It was during these impromptu sessions that Big L's natural talent for rhyming and storytelling began to shine. Lamont attended Julia Richmond High School in New York, where he continued to hone his skills as a rapper and an MC. He battled other aspiring artists in his hometown, captivating audiences 
audiences with his lyrical prowess. Big L's reputation grew, and he became a force to be reckoned with in his local hip-hop scene. In his last known interview done in Amsterdam, Big L reflected on his early days, saying, In the beginning, all I ever saw me doing was battling everybody on the street corners, rhyming in the hallways, beating on the wall, rhyming to my friends. Every now and then, a house party grabbed the mic, a block party grabbed the mic. His dedication and passion for his craft were evident, and it was clear that Big L was destined for greatness. In the early 90s, Big L formed a rap group called Three the Hard Way, consisting of himself, Doc Reem, and Rodney. However, the group's enthusiasm waned, and they quickly disbanded. Undeterred, Big L and Rodney continued their musical pursuits and renamed themselves Two Hard Mother. It was during this time that Big L's reputation as a skilled rapper started to grow, and people began referring to him as Big L. Big L's talent shone, captivating audiences with his unparalleled freestyling ability and clever wordplay. He quickly gained recognition among underground hip-hop fans, who were astounded by his ability to weave intricate rhymes and deliver them with precision effortlessly. Big L's reputation as a formidable wordsmith spread like wildfire through the streets of Harlem. His razor-sharp wit and undeniable charisma made him a force to be reckoned with in the rap battle scene, where he would go head-to-head -head with other aspiring artists, leaving them in awe of his lyrical prowess. It wasn't long before Big L's talent caught the attention of industry insiders. In 1992, Big L's talent caught the attention of Lord Finesse, a renowned rapper and producer. In a fateful encounter at an autograph session, Big L impressed Lord Finesse with a jaw-dropping freestyle. Recognizing Big L's potential, Lord Finesse exchanged numbers with him, marking the beginning of a mentorship that would shape Big L's career. And when he rhymed for me, I've never heard a cat at that age that polished. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it was a lot of things he needed to work on, but for that age, had to be 16 or 17, he was shocked. Lord Finesse took Big L under his wing, mentoring him and helping him refine his craft. With Lord Finesse's guidance, Big L honed his skills and developed a unique style that set him apart from his peers. His ability to effortlessly switch flows and deliver intricate rhymes with flawless execution became his trademark, earning him a loyal following among hip-hop enthusiasts. Big L's talent and hard work did not go unnoticed. In 1992, he signed a record deal with Columbia Records, which was a major milestone in his career. This opportunity allowed him to showcase his unique style and lyrical prowess to a wider audience. He then joined Lord Finesse's hip-hop crew, Diggin' in the Crates crew, DITC, which consisted of Lord Finesse, Diamond D, OC, Fat Joe, Buckwild, Showbiz, and AG. In 1993, Big L released his first promotional single, Devil's Son, and later said it was one of the first horrorcore singles influencing others. He said he wrote the song because, I've always been a fan of horror flicks, plus the things I see in Harlem are very scary, so I just put it all together in a rhyme. However, he said he preferred other styles over horror in the same year, Big L founded the Harlem rap group Children of the Corn with fellow rappers Cameron, Ma Dollar E, and Bloodshed. The group disbanded in 1997 after Bloodshed died in a car accident. In 1995, Big L released his highly anticipated debut album, Lifestyles, O.V. De Poor and Dangerous, under Columbia Records. The album was a revelation, showcasing his lyrical prowess, clever wordplay, vivid storytelling, and cementing his status as one of the most talented poets in hip-hop history. It was an instant hit among underground hip-hop fans and solidified his status as a rising star in the industry. Tracks like Put It On and MVP became instant classics, solidifying Big L's place in the pantheon of rap legends. The album's success catapulted Big L into the spotlight, earning him critical acclaim and a dedicated fan base. His unique style and wordplay resonated with listeners. Big L had arrived and the world was taking notice. After the release of his debut album, Lifestyle's OV De Poor and Dangerous, Big L's unique style and lyrical prowess caught the attention of both fans and fellow artists. His ability to paint vivid pictures with his words and deliver punchlines with razor-sharp precision set him apart from the crowd. Big L's influence can be seen in the tributes paid to him by some of the biggest names in hip-hop, including Nas, Jay-Z, and Eminem. Eminem paid tribute to Big L in his music video for his song Like Toy Soldiers in 2004. In an interview with MTV, Jay-Z said, We were about to sign him right before he passed away. We were about to sign him to Rockefeller. It was a done deal. I think he was very talented. I think he had the ability ability to write big records and big choruses. In an interview with MTV2, rapper Nas said, he scared me to death. When I heard that on tape, I was scared to death. I said, yo, it's no way I can compete if this is what I gotta compete with. These artists recognized his talent and the impact he had on the genre. Big L's legacy lives on through their music and the countless artists he inspired. Big L's influence can be seen in the Big L's legacy lives on through their music and the countless artists he inspired. Big L's breakthrough was not just limited to his solo work. He collaborated with a range of artists, 
further solidifying his place in the hip-hop pantheon. He collaborated with several artists such as American rapper Kid Capri on a track titled Put It On, Killer Cam and Mike Boogie on 8 is Enough. One notable collaboration was with fellow Harlem rapper and mentor Lord Finesse on the track Da Graveyard. Together, they created magic in the studio, pushing each other to new creative heights. Big L's talent extended beyond the confines of the studio. His music videos captivated audiences with their raw energy and visual storytelling. From the gritty streets of Harlem to the vivid imagery he painted with his lyrics, Big L's videos were a testament to his artistry and his ability to connect with his audience. Big L's live performances were legendary, leaving audiences in awe of his stage presence and lyrical dexterity. His ability to command the crowd and deliver his rhymes with precision showcased his mastery of the craft. Big L was a force to be reckoned with on stage, captivating fans with his electrifying performances. Big L's impact on the hip-hop industry was reflected in his album sales. Despite his untimely death, his music continued to resonate with fans around the world. Big L's impact on the rap genre and the e hip-hop community was undeniable. He received numerous accolades for his lyrical prowess and storytelling ability. His impact on the hip-hop community was recognized by his peers and critics alike. Nas, one of the most respected figures in hip-hop, once said, he scared me to death. When I heard that on tape, I was scared to death. I said, yo, it's no way I can compete if this is what I gotta compete with. Despite his growing success, Big L remained humble and focused on his craft. He continued to push boundaries and explore new artistic territories, leaving an indelible mark on the hip-hop landscape. Big L's untimely death on February 15th, 1999 was a tragic loss for the hip-hop community. However, his legacy lives on through his music and the impact he had on the genre. His influence can be heard in the work of countless artists who continue to be inspired by his unique style and lyrical genius. The news of Big L's demise was received with an unbelievable shock through the hip-hop community, leaving fans and fellow artists devastated. The loss of such a talented artist and promising young life was a blow to the hip-hop community. Big L's death left a void that could never be filled, and the unanswered answered questions surrounding his murder only added to the sense of loss. Despite the tragic end to his life, Big L's influence and legacy continue to be recognized and celebrated. His impact on the genre is still felt today, as his music continues to inspire and resonate with fans around the world. His unique style and wordplay set him apart from his peers, and his contributions to the East Coast hip-hop scene are undeniable. Big L may be gone, but his spirit lives on through his music. His words continue to captivate and inspire, reminding us of the immense talent that was lost too soon. Big L's sophomore album, The Big Picture, released posthumously in 2000, showcased his growth as an artist. The album, originally meant to be released in 1999, was a testament to his improved growth and storytelling ability. It received critical acclaim and further cemented his status as one of the greatest wordsmiths in hip-hop history. Personal struggles, industry struggles, and success. Despite his undeniable talent and unique style, Big L encountered challenges that hindered his rise to commercial success and recognition. Lamont's upbringing in Harlem was filled with both love and hardship. He was a funny and talented little boy, always making people laugh with his corny jokes. But beneath his humor, Big L harbored a sense of jealousy, always striving to win in everything he did. His mother, Gilda Terry, described him as a determined child who set his mind to something and pursued it relentlessly. As Lamont grew older, his love for music blossomed. His mother bought him and his brothers a turntable and a mixer, and they formed a makeshift DJ group. Lamont took on the role of the MC, showcasing his natural talent for rhyming and entertaining. But as the newness of their musical endeavors wore off, Lamont remained dedicated to his craft, while his brothers moved on to other interests. Harlem played a significant role in shaping Lamont's identity as an artist. He loved his neighborhood, particularly 139th Street, where he felt a strong sense of community. The block was close-knit, and everyone knew each other. Lamont's mother, known for taking numbers in the neighborhood, organized the block association and brought the community together. It was a time of unity and support. Big L, who started out as an MC, controlling parties, organizing rap battles, and swaying the crowd with his incomparable lyrics and charm, said that he was always considered a good MC, and people encouraged him to start entering rap competitions. He was pleasantly surprised when Hip Hop Connections, a magazine dedicated to celebrating the hip hop culture, voted him as one of the illest MCs of all time. I was always considered a good MC, but never thought of myself that way. When I first started rhyming, people thought I'd been doing it for years. They said I should enter competitions and I started winning them. People couldn't believe I'd not been rhyming for a long time. I started seeing in magazines that they saw me as a real great lyricist, but I'd never really looked at myself like that. I know that I can rhyme and all that, but I didn't know people looked at my lyrics that way. When I saw that I was number one, I was like, hey, that's hot. I rap about what comes to mind. I don't think there's any subject I wouldn't rap about. But as Lamont's talent for rapping grew, so did his ambition. He wanted to make it big in the rap industry and leave a lasting legacy. 
Big L's competitive spirit led him to compete at the Apollo, where he quickly gained a reputation as the best rapper on Lennox Avenue. His performances showcased his unique style and lyrical genius, capturing the attention of those around him. However, Lamont's journey to success was not without its struggles. Even with his undeniable talent, he faced challenges in gaining commercial success and recognition. He was overshadowed by other artists like Nas and the Fugees, who dominated the rap scene at the time. One of the major challenges Lamont faced was the lack of support from his record label, Columbia Records. They failed to understand his style and did not provide him with the necessary promotion and marketing efforts. Like I said, Sony lost track of him because, you know, he was there, got four mics in the source. We think, oh, he good. Mm -hmm. Devil's son. Okay, lifestyles of the poor and dangerous, he good. Nas Kane, Illmatic, mm. superstar lineup, L gets pushed to the side. Mm. This lack of support hindered Lamont's ability to reach a wider audience and gain the commercial success he desired. He left the label in 1996 after releasing his debut album, reportedly due to artistic differences over Columbia's pursuits of the charts, while L remained true to his hardcore roots. Lamont's dedication to his craft and his relentless pursuit of success were evident in his work ethic. They didn't promote me in the way I needed to be promoted. I'm a lyricist, and they were trying to point me in a different direction to where I was heading. Also, a lot of the people I was originally working with at Columbia had left, so I was there with a bunch of strangers that didn't really know my music. I didn't really get along with the new people, so I left. Throughout most of his career, Lamont remained an independent hustler, organizing parties and finding ways to make money on his own. Lamont's dedication to his craft and his relentless pursuit of success were evident in his work ethic. When asked what his opinions about the independent thing he was doing at that moment was, he replied, right now I'm putting out my own records, because right now that's the best thing for me to do to make major labels to respect me as an artist, you know, to let them know that I really don't need y'all like that. I'm looking for the deal, not a deal, the deal. Cause anybody can get a deal. If I don't get the deal, then I'll continue to put my own music out and make my own money until they give me the deal I need, the deal that's gonna blow Big L up as an artist. Big L had a strong work ethic and was always looking for opportunities to showcase his talent. He was on the verge of signing with Rockefeller Records. Major milestone in his career before his life was tragically cut short. The only reason he hadn't signed with Rockefeller Records was because of his friends. He wanted them to get signed along with him, but the record label refused and insisted that they wanted just him. Lamont's impact on the rap world cannot be denied despite his struggles. His unique style and flair brought a fresh perspective to the genre, and his freestyle rap battles are legendary. Lamont's talent and lyrical prowess were recognized by many in the industry, and his influence continues to be felt today. Lamont's journey in the rap industry began when he caught the attention of Lord Finesse, a prominent figure in the hip-hop scene. Lord Finesse recognized Lamont's talent and helped him secure a record deal with Columbia Records. It was a significant milestone for Lamont as he saw it as an opportunity to showcase his skills to a wider audience. His debut album, Lifestyles OV De Poor and Dangerous, showcased his lyrical genius and unique style, but unfortunately, it did not receive the exposure it deserved. Despite the critical acclaim it received, the album did not perform well commercially. When asked about it, he commented, The album sold pretty good. It did well, extremely well, when you take into account that it didn't get much airplay or video play, but people still went out and supported it. If you took the promotion and video play away from some other artists, they couldn't sell what I sold. It sold just by word of mouth. People were like, Big L is hot, we like him, not because the label put me out there or supported me. In addition to the lack of support from his record label, Big L also faced challenges in navigating the competitive rap industry. On the night of February 23rd, 1995, Jay-Z went to freestyle on the Stretch Armstrong and Bobby Doe show, an underground radio and hip-hop radio show in New York. Big L was also at the show on that day. Together, they entered Stretch and Bob domain, and though they hadn't planned for it, Jay-Z and Big L ended up recording their two freestyles together, clocking in at seven minutes, as they took turns rapping spontaneous verses. The competitive spirit was so fierce that it almost sounded like the two were battling, but as Bobby Toe puts it, I think L and Jay had a competition amongst themselves and their crews, and it was never transparent or citywide known. Turns out that Jay-Z and Big L had already battled in Harlem before that night. Big L had to prove himself constantly and fight for recognition among his peers. However, his battles with Jay-Z became legendary, showcasing his talent and lyrical prowess. These battles served as a testament to Lamont's skill and solidified his reputation as a formidable rapper. Lamont remained determined and continued to hustle independently. In 1998, Big L started his own record label, Flamboyant Entertainment. Under his label, he released a single titled Ebonics. His first posthumous album was also released under his label. Big L's impact on the rap community was undeniable. His unique style and flair brought a fresh perspective to the genre, and his talent was recognized by many in the industry. Lamont's influence continues to be felt today, with artists like Eminem and Mac Miller citing him as a major influence on their own careers.
Tributes, enduring legacy, unreleased songs. When you sold apes, we sold pies. When you rode bikes, we drove fives. There's no comparison, son. Just embarrassing. I'm running with some of the baddest men in, in the, the whole, whole New York. York. We hold the fort while you clap clats is holding. Play your hating, pushing stolen whips. Big L's tragic death at the young age of 24 cut short a promising career and left a void in the rap world. Tributes poured in from fans, fellow artists, and the music community as a whole, mourning the loss of a true lyrical genius. On March 6, 1999, his friend and mentor, Lord Finesse, and his DIY. ITC crew gathered for a show live at the Tramps and paid the first public tribute to Big L Hip Hop DX, a popular online magazine called Big L, the most underrated lyricist ever. Rapper Royce to 5 9 inches said he believed Coleman would have been a top 3 inches rapper of all time if he had not been killed so prematurely. A documentary titled Street Struck, The Big L Story was set to be released in 2017. The first trailer was released on August 29, 2009 and showed that the documentary would contain interviews with his mother, brother, and childhood friend. As of the time of this video, the documentary is yet to be released. In 2022, the 140th Street and Lenox Avenue intersection in Harlem was co-named Lamont Big L Coleman Way. While Big L's commercial success may not have matched his immense talent during his lifetime, it is his unreleased songs that have truly captivated the hip-hop community. These hidden gems showcase Big L's raw talent and lyrical prowess. Big L's second studio album, The Big Picture, received critical acclaim and sold up to 500,000 units after being released posthumously. The album also peaked at number two on the US R&B chart, leaving listeners in awe of his unmatched wordplay. Other albums released posthumously include 139 and Lennox, Return of the Devil's Son, and The Danger Zone. In addition to his musical influence, Big L's legacy lives on through the impact he made on his community. He was a proud representative of Harlem, using his platform to shed light on the struggles faced by those living in underserved neighborhoods. His lyrics served as a voice for the voiceless, addressing social issues and advocating for change. This commitment to his community continues to inspire artists to use their platform for social activism and to address important societal issues through their music. Did you enjoy this video? Click on any of the cards on your screen right now for similar content. Thank you.